Good morning. Hello. How are you doing today? Hello, Xanax. How's your day going? Uh, Esitsu, good morning. How are you doing today? I um I tried to carry Zilby down, but as soon as I sat down, he's like, nope, I'm going to jump over, over here. So this is where he's hanging out. So that's that's a fun thing. Uh, all right. So, um, Unreal Realities. Hello. Are oh, you came for Zilby today? Well, he is here, so you can you can you can see him above me. So he is he is hanging out. He just wasn't like being held by me. He doesn't. So for some reason, he loves being held. But for some reason, he hates it if you sit down with him while being held. He does, he's not a lap cat, so he doesn't like to be on like our lap. Every once in a while, he'll come up and say, like, okay, I can be on your lap. Usually, it's because he's really cold. And then, and then as soon as he warms up, he's like, nope, I am done. Goodbye. I'm out of here. As it's too great, you're on a 10-day commit streak, which is the best you've managed all year. About to make it 11. Nice. Uh, that's awesome. Well, here's here's to uh, continuing that as long as you can. All right. So uh, yesterday we we re-recorded, or yesterday evening we re-recorded the um, uh, the connection lesson again um and so i was i was thinking about this overnight and i think the first part of this would be decide like um describe like decide describe i'm not sure when like where where I would put this i think it would be something like uh describe which um, methods, I guess like which query methods, methods, macros to use for each, uh, I guess like to use. You figured you need some reason to stop me putting projects on hold. You went a month without working on one. Oh, wow, yeah. It's it's kind of funny. Um, I I can't remember where I heard this, but I I remember hearing that if you if you pause a like a habit or something for two days, uh, it becomes exponentially harder to get back into it. Uh, if it's just one day, it's usually like super easy. Two days, exponentially harder, and then it just gets harder after that. So like. I could totally see like going a month without it usually just means like, okay, I'll put it on hold for like a week. And then that means a month. Uh, yeah, it's, it's so, it's so hard to get back into things. Stacking. Hello. How are you doing today? That's how you feel with games. You put something down and come back to it several months later. I do the same thing. I I distinctly remember like several times in the past having a game that I was super into and I put it down for like a week and it's like, okay, I don't just have no no desire to play this anymore. Um but if I wait and like I start over again from scratch, then it's like, okay, I'm I'm fully into this again. It just is that there's that momentum. And uh, we lose that momentum after a couple days if you don't, like, follow up on it. Uh, but that's one of the reasons why I've learned, uh, like, habits are one of the most powerful forces for, for us and, like, getting stuff done. And we just, just go with the flow, make it a habit, and then just do it forever.
I try that, but get around 25% of the way into the new game and do the same again, never to see the ending. I have unfortunately done that myself as well. Yeah. That's that, that, yeah. I have, to, yeah, I, I know how that feels. Um, all right. Query methods. Uh, macros available to us. So, uh, SQL X has several uh, methods that we can use to uh, send queries to the database. Now, they also have macros. Do they all have macros? I think they do, right? Okay, so we have we have functions, we have query, query as, query as with, query scalar, query scalar with, and query with. And then uh, macros, query, query as, query as unchecked, query file, query file as, query, f oh, okay, so there's, there's a, you get file here, oh, but they have the scalar too. Okay, so. Um, let's see. SQL X has several methods that we can use to send queries to the database. Um, Uh, let's, let's, I guess, go through and, and take a look at these. Now for functions, if I have, like, if I open up query and query, so we have the function query, make a SQL query. Okay. That doesn't really tell us much for the macro statically checked SQL query. So it's interesting that this has way more this has way more documentation than the function. To me, I would do that if I wanted to sort of guide the users, which would be us, towards this instead of the functions. Um, for those of you who have used uh, SQL X, is, is that correct? Is that like a good, good assumption that they don't want us to use the functions? They want us to use the macros? Or is it just lack of documentation in the functions? Yeah, there's tons of documentation in here. Say it wants to use the macros because that is the entire concept of the crate. Okay. If I run the functions, it doesn't it doesn't check them, right? It waits until runtime. And so like if it's uh if it's the macro it'll like check to see is this correct SQL. With the function, it probably doesn't. It, well, it can only run that at runtime.
Okay, so if I have that, uh, if we create another one down here, um, I made a change to my ZSHRC to try to keep dot files updated, and it's taking way too long to run. I need a, I need to async that, or I need to, um, uh, not run it every time. Maybe on like first load. Uh, let's see. So. Okay, so what do I want to do for this one? I want to. We have you. Uh, I don't know what I was thinking. Uh, back to main. Oh, Docker. That's what I was thinking. Yes. Okay. Sometimes you have to use the function because you can't always know at compile time, so both are used, but definitely macros whenever you can. Okay. That makes sense. So then it's it then we can put that in here. So SQLX has several methods that we uh several methods um they use uh to send queries to the database. Um uh let's see. SQLX has several uh methods, I guess like functions and, and macros. Functions and macros that we can use to send queries to the database um, at first glance. Uh, they all do the same thing. So it can be confusing to choose uh, which one. Let's uh, dive in and uh, go through uh, when when to use which. OK, so first of all, we have the functions. Uh, the SQL X uh, functions um, let's see. OK, so the SQL X functions, maybe we should like um, SQL X has the following functions uh, available available to create queries. All right, so let's uh, let's go grab these. And if I put that over to the right, you stay on the left, and also I make you full screen. All right, what do we have? We have, ooh, can I just copy and paste these? Kind of. I can, I can do that. Uh, and then I can go to Word, match surround that. Um, ooh, wait, no, I can I can do one better. We can match surround with that, and then we can get links to each function. Okay, so query. Uh, all right, so that's query. Query as. Query as with. Map to a concrete type. Uh, wait, no, concrete type, so that's the as. The with, with the given arguments. Interesting. Um, query 
Rescalar. Make a SQL query that is mapped to a single concrete type using from row. Okay. Does that mean we're only getting one item? Yeah, it's just uh, like a single row then, right? Scale our width. And then query width. Okay. So, um, hey, notice the documentation for these methods are very sparse. Uh, that's because they um, don't give you compile time. Uh, verification, validation, checking. What order are they using? I guess it's statically checked. Okay, so they're using statically checked. So they don't give you compi uh, statically checked. Uh, so they don't, maybe it's like, instead of um, they don't give you, they don't statically check uh, your um, your SQL queries, queries at um, compile time, and instead just run them at runtime. Uh, this means um, uh, this uh, removes some of the protections that the uh, macros um, give you. Now, how often do you actually run into that? Because I, I'm trying to think like, it's just the types you know of, right? If you're defining the queries, well, okay. If you're just allowing your client to send back queries and then run it blindly, then you're going to have to use the functions. But I don't know any, like GraphQL is essentially the only thing that uh, has like some kind of like system around that to do that relatively safely. I don't know of any uh, SQL that lets you do that safely. So I'm trying to think like, when when do you run into that stacking? Because we 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 normally know the um, we normally know the types at compile time. We don't know the values, but that doesn't matter, right? It just needs to be the types. Uh, so due to the above, it's recommended um, to use the macros whenever possible. Um, you do need to use the function that 
uh, one of the functions. Um, it works very similarly to the macros. Okay, so then we'll do macros. All right, so SQL X has the following uh, macros available to create, uh, I guess it's a create and run queries, right? All right, so that's, uh, I'll just go and we'll find these. Okay, so there's not really much to go with on these. So let's go ahead and close you out and we'll open up our macros. So for queries themselves, we have query, query as, query as unchecked, query file, file as, file unchecked, file scalar, file scalar unchecked, file unchecked, query scalar, scalar unchecked, query unchecked. Um, but there's, there's a list of them, right? Okay, nice. Okay. Great. So, where is first? There you are. Um, and so, query statically checks SQL query with print line style syntax. This expands to an instance of query map that outputs an ad hoc anonymous struct type. If the query has at least one output column that is not void or. Okay. Yeah, so if there's no output, then it's just going to be void or, or nothing. And then we can return, okay, so based upon what we want to get back, we return those methods. Database URL must be set. And I think these are all the same for all of the macros. So the database URL needs to be set inside of a .env. I like how they say they're actually using .envy. They could have just gone through and changed this to .envy instead of adding that. I don't know why they did. Uh, I don't know why they felt the need to like. I guess it's also weird. They um. They link to the old dot env here, and then later on tell you, yeah, we're not doing that. That just doesn't make sense to me. Okay, so. Basically. We use query when we just want to make a query. Um, we can get something back, but we probably don't really care about it going to a type too much because it's just an anonymous struct coming back. So I'd probably use query for something that I 
I would probably use query for something where I'm not getting anything back. That's that's what I would probably do. So I'd probably go with the execute with that one. Query as. A variant of query which takes a path to an explicitly defined struct as the output type. So basically, it's pretty much the exact same thing as query. Uh, except whatever comes back is then going to stuff into a, uh, well, it's going to attempt to turn it into the type that you hand it. Now we found that you can put a type that it's not going to work and it kind of does the thing. I guess it's like attempting to do it. Because if I did, uh, if I do zero or more, it, I guess it ignores this first type here. If I do the zero, if I do execute, wait a second. Oh, zero or one. So that's interesting. Look here. So none, we have execute. This one doesn't even have none. Execute is still on here. That's the re okay. So it's basically just running query uh, from query as if I use execute. Interesting. Okay. So this is now a typed query where I want the specific type coming back. Excellent. Query as unchecked. Um, a variant of query as, which does not check the input or output types. This still does parse the query to ensure it's syntactically and semantically valid for the current database. Now, this like has the struct coming in, right? But if it's not trying to check the output types, does that, I don't know, this is, this is confusing to like, I wish they had more, more documentation. Like what happens if it fails? Is that, a, does it give you an option type? Does it just not work? Does it crash? Well, it sounds like it wouldn't crash it. Well, may, maybe like usually unchecked would be like a hard crash then, right? Again, I don't think we'd ever use this. So uh, if I were to add our stuff into here, so, okay, query um, this method. Okay, so this um, macro allows us to run a query that will be statically checked at compile time. Uh, Het Tennis, good morning, hello. I uh, just want to say you've been here about 30 minutes. You think your content is great? Thank you so much. Um, I'm glad I'm glad it's helpful. Also, how are you doing today? Uh, this macro allows us to run a query that will be statically checked at compile time. Um, uh, the uh it will not i should probably like bold that it'll not return um a type of your choice choosing uh but rather an anonymous uh struct based on the um based on what the sql the database returns. Uh, therefore, this macro is best for um, uh, best for when you don't care about return values, like um, like some inserts. I guess like some like uh, some inserts um, updates. and deletes. There is, of course, insert when you want the ID back. 
Um, awesome. That's great to hear. Maybe you can group the macros into two separate lists and say that the second is the unchecked versions of the first. Yeah, that might be a really good one. Is we could we could do that. So Yeah. I like that because we have like unchecked as here. So we have uh macros. I'm at four. I think I think we can go up to five, I think. So uh the last one here would be so macro uh for we have like the normal um the normal macros. I don't know how to call them like normal stuff, and then we're gonna have the unchecked uh macros. So we're gonna take Oh, this would be okay. This would be really cool. Let me see if I could do this. I'm gonna grab you. We're gonna search for unchecked. I want to grab the entire line and delete it. Go down to single line and oh. I was really hoping that would work. Um, I think I have to keep the line. Oh, okay, so hold on. It's it's gonna be way easier for me to just do this one to one at a time. That would have been really cool if I could have like gone down to one, but then it still um, pasted them all. Okay, that makes it a little bit easier here. Uh, so we can talk about uh, the unchecked macros do exactly the same thing as their um, their named pair above but they don't check uh, the input or the output. Yeah, checked macros. That's a good one. Checked macros and then unchecked macros. I like that. Uh, Xanax, hello, hello again. Uh, so, um, I recommend staying with the checked macros as they give us, uh, the protection that we want, um, at compile time. Um, only, uh, only try the unchecked macros if the checked ones aren't um, aren't able like so aren't able to like work for you for your situation um, yesterday you installed a camera in your apartment nice uh, is it like an IoT camera or is it just like a security camera? There's, um, I've thought about like uh, getting some of those. Most of the ones that I see like in the stores are, I don't know how much I trust them. Like they, they seem to be sending all this stuff to the cloud. Security camera, night vision sensors, 300. 60 degrees. Oh, nice. Sometimes I've wanted to install some of those to check out what Zilby's up to overnight. Because I do know he moves around, but uh, also sometimes I'm not completely sure because I'll wake up at random times and like he's just like still out cold, uh, like on a blanket next to me. Um, all right, query file. 
Oh, Kriaz. Let's let's go over Kriaz. Um So uh this macro uh will uh so this macro statically checks okay so let's go like um these macros all statically check the uh sequel um at compile time and they also check the input um, and output. Um, once your cat licked your hair, uh, I heard it means she is safe. I, I, I think I read or I um. I saw on one of Jackson Galaxy's videos that if if a cat is like licking our hairs, it usually just means that they see that they're grooming us. It's like the same. They think it's the same as us like petting them. I think, uh, it's it's like, I don't know. I I think it's just a part of a hey, I like you a lot. You're my you're part of my tribe, so I'm gonna do this favor for you. Uh, Bullfirst Dad, hello. How are you doing today? Uh, these macros all statically check the SQL compile time, and they also check the input and output. Now, they check them at compile time. So at compile time. Uh, now, is that true? No. They can't check the output at compile time. Uh, they also check the input and output at runtime uh, to make sure that they are the um the types that uh, uh we tell them uh in the code okay so that being said this macro allows us to run a, so so this macro will not return a type of your choosing, but rather an anonymous struct based on what the database returns. Uh, therefore, this macro is best for when you don't care about the return values, like some inserts, updates, and deletes. Uh, you say, you need to lick the cat. Uh, I, I can't imagine licking the cat would result in anything other than a ton of hair on our tongues that would just take forever to get rid of. Um, okay, so this macro, so we, we already know you statically check, so I don't need that. So this macro, ooh. Oh, I got the, I got the, um, the return too. That's the problem about that. Okay, so this macro, um, will uh okay so this mac will return uh the result uh the resulting data uh into a struct of your choice at runtime uh that makes it best for most most uh, most cases Uh, query file. Okay. So query file. Um, query file. This is basically exactly like query. So this is the same as um, the query uh, macro, but it gets the uh, SQL from a file uh, 
Yeah, so from a file. Um, this is best when uh, we want to... Uh, so I... Does the unchecked have the files too? They do. Um, this is the same... Uh, this is best when we want... When we have... Um, we have uh, large, uh, complex queries that we don't uh, want um, in our code, in the code. Okay, query file as. Uh, combines the syntaxes of query as and query file. Okay, yeah. So this is the same as the... Okay, so I, I almost feel like we're going to do the same thing that we did for unchecked macros. Now we're going to say... Um, I Now I ran out. I guess we'll do this. Two, three, four, five. This is going to be um, checked file macros so I want okay so you all come down with me down here all right so uh, this is the same as the uh, query okay so um, these uh, macros are exactly the same as uh, the ones above, um, but I uh, get their uh, SQL queries. Um, from a file instead of a uh, instead of just like, okay, okay, yeah, so these uh, get there from, from a file instead of um, being written into the code, it's uh, the code itself. Um, this is best when we have complex uh, queries or just really long queries. Okay, so because that, I don't feel that I need to keep this anymore. So we're just going to do that. Um, all right, cool. Query file as unchecked. Query file scalar. Query file scalar. Query file scalar unchecked. A query file unchecked. Okay, query scalar. The next one we can actually write something about. All right, what is this? A variant of query which expects a single column from the query and evaluates to an instance of query scalar. Uh, okay, so we're only getting a single column, uh, but we can get multiple rows, right? The name of the column is not required to be a valid Rust identifier. However, you can still use the column type override syntax in which the column name does have to be a valid Rust uh, identifier for the override to parse properly. If the override parse fails, the error is silently ignored. We just don't have a reliable, okay, so. This is, we can get multiple of them though, right? Still? It's just a single column. So it's not a single row, it's a single column. 
So, um, where am I? All right, so this macro uh, is a variant of the query macro uh, where the um, resulting uh, data is a, well, I guess, okay. So it's a variant of the query I don't even think I need to put that in there. I think what we can do is we can just say this um, this macro will uh, return only a single column uh, um, okay so this will return well, only a single column of of data. Uh, I guess like I guess that's really what it is. Like this, only a single single column of data. Um, we can still get um, many rows, but um, because it's just a single column. Um, We, uh, we, I don't really know what to write here. It's like, maybe it's just that. This macro will turn only a single column of data. Maybe, maybe that's all I need. Uh, query scalar unchecked. And finally, query unchecked. And that's it. Okay, so uh, I want to play with a few of these uh, before I before I move on too much further because I want to make sure that there's nothing more that I need to put into this. That because like it, it from a brief reading of the documentation, the check macros query as is like the thing to do. Like that's just go with query as. 99% of the time, that's going to be what you want. Uh, maybe on like inserts, you want query and on gets, you want query as. Okay, fine. Um, query scalar to me, it feels like it'd be, you, it almost is a way for us to um, almost treat like a database, like an ECS system where it's like, okay, get us everything from like this query, like this, this column, and then we're going to do that column, and then this column, and then we're just going to do stuff to it. Uh, and then like, we'll stuff it back in. That that could be interesting, but I don't know if it, how helpful that really is. Like, I don't, I don't think I've ever run into that, but I don't do like a lot of data science. I don't do a lot of other things. Uh, those Those fields certainly could care a lot more about this. Especially if you use like JSON types, where like maybe you're just getting a scalar of a JSON type coming out, which might, or like a string of a JSON type. I don't know. Uh, but all right, let's uh let's play with this. So, uh, we have you. Let's go ahead and set this up. Um, I want to use, uh, what is it? The dot and V and V, uh, I think it's, um, I guess we could just unwrap it. Unwrap unchecked. No, I think we could just unwrap. Okay. And then, um, I want, we have my database here. The database should still be the same, so I should still be able to run the queries, right? Uh, oh, we need to get to set up the entire pool. Pool equals uh, PG options, new uh, max connections, sure, five, why not? Uh, we have 
connect. Um, we have Okay, so we'll have our database URL. We have connect. There was nothing else in here, right? Oh, wait, we have a wait. Uh, and then an unwrap. Okay, so that gives us the pool. Um, and then I want then we can start doing some queries type stuff. So I want to play around with some of these different types. So for the checked macros, um, I want to double check in. I, I checked this last night, but um, just like make sure I'm not insane. It checks the the types, but not the values, I believe. So if I have a value being passed in, uh, and we can we can val we can verify this by the dot dot env is making this available at compile time, but It doesn't know that, for instance. Um, uh, let's see. Oh, a random number generator. That's runtime, right? What if I do cargo add uh, rand? Let's do it. Uh, okay, let's add in rand and let's just uh, create a random number. Let's do a uh, async function insert. I assume that I still have my entire database set up correct. Uh, let's do a Docker exec again. Um, all right, so instead of the bin bash, we can go straight into PSQL. I think I can do it with a quote like that, right? So PSQL, you. Postgres. You're running. Oh, okay. So it didn't like the quotes. I wonder, can I just do um, SQL, you Postgres? Oh, that works. I just don't use. Okay, don't use the quotes. That's that's the answer. Uh, and then the database is uh, SQL X tutorial. Okay. And if I look at table games, that's still there. Perfect. Uh, when will I be uploading the course? So I'm going to upload it to my LMS, and then. Um, and then we'll I'll sell it from there. Also, hello the Enri real the real Enrico Palazzo. Uh, hello, good morning. Yeah, so I'll be uploading it to the LMS and then selling it from there. So uh, that's that's my um, that's it's slow it's slow I'm slowly uploading them if that makes sense. Also, we're continuing to like write these things out. So. I, 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 um, it's hard to, to predict how long it's going to take for some of them, uh, for like the, the, let's see, I sort of fell out of doing some of the, the little check marks on some of them. So it's a little bit hard for me to tell, uh, I feel like I'm close to halfway done, if not around there. Um, Art went in. Hello. Uh, how much would it cost, by the way? I've watched uh, how you create it. It would be even would even be ready to pre-order after seeing how much time. Well, uh, thank you for that. Um, the um, it's. 
I go back and forth on this. Like I have I have some ideas. Uh, and then like it depends upon how confident I'm feeling on the, which day. Like on some days I'm like, oh yeah, I'm gonna totally like build a charge like a, a higher amount for this. This is gonna be awesome. Uh, it's going to provide so much value. And then on some days I'm like, I don't know, this is going to be stupid. Nobody's going to want this. And then, uh, uh, so I, I go back and forth with like that on a day-to-day -day basis sometimes. So the thing, the thing is like, it's, it's hard for me to tell right now. Also, my plan is to have two different things. We're going to have a live course, uh, and that's going to be, okay, I have all this stuff. We're going to go through it essentially together. I'll be doing like extra like lessons private for anybody who's in that live course like think of a code school boot camp style type thing except it's not really a code school it's just a bunch of us on discord in a private channel uh that will do that like every every couple nights and i i plan on i i don't know if i'll do a pre-order but i plan on doing a uh like an alpha is going to be like the first release of this we're going to see how that goes and then i'll move forward on so uh that's 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 the idea um so and then oh yeah and then i'll also sell the course on its own to people who don't want to be part of the live course at a pretty steep discount to that so i want uh i want people to be able to like take these things at like a variety of price levels so Anywhere between ten and ten thousand dollars US. Yeah, something like that. Like I feel I feel that eventually I might actually have enough value to like potentially do a um start and stop whenever you want. Um uh what is that called? The subscription. But beginning off, we're just gonna say like, hey, you're buying individual courses. Um because like I don't think I have I don't have nearly enough to like be adding new stuff and uh fast enough for like a subscription model type thing, but um for individual courses I definitely have that. So like if you're gonna I also want to chop things up and say like okay here's like a a SQL X course like all it is is connecting the SQL X and doing that and I might so that would be like really cheap because that's all that is that one thing and like you're seeing this right here. It'd be several different lessons on connecting to SQL X, the, the different parts of SQL X, and then maybe like just some more, a little bit more stuff in there. And then it's like, okay, uh, there you go. That's like, I don't know, $5, $10, like something, something really cheap. It only gives you that. Uh, I have not done any pricing competition research yet, so I have no clue. Zilby, that's like the perfect angle to not see your face. There, that's better. So those are those are sort of like the three tiers. And then free tier is watching the stream here while I'm making it and also uh, perusing through all the VODs to find to find the stuff. Um, so it's uh, it's basically not really a real free tier, but um, I don't really know how to do a free tier properly. So that's that's what I've that's what I've got mentally. All right, what are we doing? Okay, yeah. So I have I have this here. So if I want to do another insert, uh, we're gonna take in a pool. It's gonna be a reference to a pool. That's grass. Uh, and then let's say we take in the name, which is going to be a stir. Uh, I wonder if it can be a stir, if it has to be a, um, a string, we're going to find out, right? And a, actually, you know what we can do here? We're going to create a game struct. So we're going to have a name. So we're going to have a create game struct. So we have a name. It's going to be a string. Uh, you should be public. Uh, we have a pub platform. Uh, Twisted Seed, hello. How are you doing today? The string. That's um, simple game 
a function uh, random new. All right, so for random new, I want to let uh, mute RNG equals, let's do a thread range. It's like thread, it's not thread local. Why, why do I always forget this? It's like rand. Oh, you know why you don't know what that is? Because I didn't restart the LSP after I uh, installed it. That's why I can't find that. That is that RNG. It's like it's a new or it's um it's something, right? Uh it's been <laughs> not default. Oh no 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 no. That's the type. Uh there's actually a thread. That one. That creates it. Okay. Uh then I want a Random select so um, our name is going to be. We can do random uh, random characters, right? So. Uh, that's alpha. Alpha numeric. What is it called? It, it's alphanumeric random, like create. Uh, it is, ooh, this is not big enough. I can't see it. It's also not right. There's another way to do it where I can say like alphanumeric and then off of that do something from there and I forget oh I forget what it is. Um uh can I make this smaller and then I'll just see. Sample string. That's what it is. Okay. There you go. Sample string. I hand it a mute, mutable reference to RNG. And then the length. Uh, let's do, uh, I don't know, 10. Our, our random game is 10 alphanumeric characters. Uh, and our, our platform uh, is equal to, we'll just say Steam. Okay. So then we're going to try self with uh, name and platform platform form okay so that's helpful why are you upset uh, expected one of oh yeah because this is not finished writing so this is gonna be a game which is the create game uh and if i don't return anything that's fine okay so then that should make you happy Cool, you're not happy. Not fine. Oh, right. I need to import you and import you. And okay, so we have, oh, uh, we could do our insert now. So we're going to try, I want to try the query macro, but we're creating the game at runtime. So it can't check the values, but it can check the types. So uh, this is going to be a, a SQL X query. Uh, you just take in this. This is going to be um, insert into games. I want uh, name and platform. Values 
Uh, and then it's going to be uh, name out oh, the game. So dollar one, dollar two. And then in here, we're going to have game dot name, game dot platform. Uh, and then we're going to, oh, we can bind, we can bind. Uh, that's not how it works. It's, then we bind, uh, game dot name. We also bind second one, game dot platform. Is that how it works? We're going to find out. All the all the documentation only showed one bind as opposed to like two values coming in. So I'm curious about that. Uh, and then we're going to execute because I don't care about the return value uh, and hand it in the pool. Gonna wait and unwrap. Uh, Dottie. Hello, how are you doing today? All right. Expected two parameters, got zero. Oh, okay. So maybe I do need to do this. Game dot name, game dot platform. So then I don't need these two binds. Okay. So it likes this from, so, so far it likes this. Now we're gonna create a new game. So we're gonna do let, uh, Random game equals create game random new. Uh, and then we're going to do an insert, uh, hand it a reference to the pool, hand it the random game. Uh, we'll await, and that cannot possibly fail, right? And we're going to run this once. Uh, which apparently I have for, let's, um, I'm connected to database here. Where do I want to, uh, let, I guess let's put this to the right. Okay. We're in the correct place so I can do a cargo run once. Okay, no feedback. So if I come back to here, we have we have the new game added in. So uh, I think I think this validates what I'm my like previous assumptions, which is that the query macros, these macros are going to statically check the types, but it's perfectly fine if the if the data coming in is at runtime. Which does mean that the macros are like 99% of the time because like you never really say like, yep, this is totally what the data you want. That, that's it. Art Winnin, uh, subscribe with a tier one subscription. Art Winnin, thank you so much for the subscription. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, let's see. Okay. So that, that helps us out with this. So now I know I'm absolutely correct about this. So statically check the SQL to compile time. They also check the input and output at runtime to make sure they're the types that we tell them in the code. So if I, if I were to attempt to put in, so let's now check that. If we change this from a name, uh, and you're like now an I32 which is definitely not what we have in the database. Uh, your name, let's just comment that out. We'll do let name equals, uh, I guess like we'll, we'll just say uh, 64. This should now yell at me, right? Mismatch types, expected a stir, found an I-32. Notice how I haven't told it at all the type of any of these, like in the database. 
it's um it's using that database connection at at that's really cool. So it's using this with Rust analyzer to let me know that this is not working. So again, it's checking the types at compile time. So it's checking that it's it's so weird. Okay, so it's it's both. It's well, okay. So Rust itself won't let me do a a different type at runtime. So this is check the check the, also check the input. So uh this means that the uh input types are checked at compile time. Uh, and and the output at runtime to make sure that there are types that we um, runtime uh, at runtime. So I think that's the best way to put it. So if I if I is there even a way for me in Rust to try to pull a fast one on here and say, okay, go ahead. Uh, this is totally a string. And then like, oop, nope, it's totally not a string. I changed it on you. I don't think so, right? Because like Rust itself, the language itself, it has a strong enough type system that I cannot do that. So I can't force it. Uh, unchecked. Okay, let's go into unchecked next then. Uh, unchecked is exactly as what they do above. So is unchecked is the exact same thing, but it doesn't check the input or output. So this one should not yell at me. That's the, So my theory is this one should not yell at me, but it will fail and crash at runtime. That's that's the that's my theory. So query uncheck. Oh, it's query as unchecked. No, I want query unchecked. Yeah. So notice the error went away, and it's perfectly fine with me doing this now. I'm handing an I32 instead of a stir. That being said, I should probably do this the other way around and have an I32 in a database because I think an I32 will, I wonder if it's going to be stored as a, a string in the database. I wonder if the database itself is going to say, oh, you gave me a number. I'll turn that into a string. I'm curious about that now. Let's find out. So let's run this again. That ran, that ran just fine. Yeah, okay, so it, it, this is when we need that. So if we need to not check, if we basically have to say like, look, I know that the database is telling you it takes a string and I'm telling you, you have a number. Come on, just look, will you let me do it? And it's like, nope like strong, hard will not work. You must do this. So there's a couple types that I, I think um, you might run into trouble with, with like the type system and you might need unchecked for. So string to number, it's like, okay, I know it's a number, just like it will become a string. The database will be fine with it. Dates too. If it like wants some kind of like special time date and you're like, look, a string date in the correct format will turn into the right type of date in the database. So please just let me take a string date from the front end and throw it in there. Those two scenarios are probably the most common for why you'd want unchecked.
Uh, can you cast in the query itself? I bet I could. So let's go back to query. It'll start yelling at me about this. So if I do a uh, query name, now can I do like an into? I can't do an into. Oh, mismatch types expected in enum option stir found an option I32. as a string. Nope, Rust won't let me cast that as a string. Oh, you were thinking like $1 text or one integer. Um, let's find out. So it'd be this first one, right? So uh, I guess we could do Oh, it's a varchar. Can I do can I do varchar? Varchar? Text. Where does that syntax come from? Is there is there documentation for that in in here? I didn't see that in the simple one. Oh, that's the Postgres docs. Okay. That explains that. Oh, I see here. Okay, I see I see your hmm. Can I, is there, what's the Varchar ver equivalent? Uh, it wouldn't be, so like it is, so those are type Varchar. So can I say, um, like that's, that's the type that it is. It still doesn't let me do that. Uh, I could do int, uh, int four. Ooh, okay. That worked. I could say, hey, query, I know you want this to be a very specific type. I am, I want this value to be an integer. And it's almost like it's overwriting what the database says it's going to be. This will just work fine though. Uh what's a what's a type that I could that won't work with string? I mean, I think anything can become a string in a database, right? Uh, do I need to specify anything afterwards? Uh, do you mean like from the result of like query? Like well, what what we get from this? Not really. Um, so we get this PG query result, which is a dynamically created struct based upon the result of this. Because it's an insert, we'll get the rows affected. Um, I'm also curious if I do this, Let's do um, returning. Oh, sorry, you meant just use one dollar one. I have not seen anything used after the dollar one before. Yeah, I hadn't used that. I haven't like seen that before either. But apparently, that's a Postgres thing. I wonder if that's a MySQL thing too. Uh, let's return ID. That's a uh, pretty common to do. Uh, you are now really upset because uh, executes 
Oh, no method name execute. So I can't use execute anymore. Now I need to use... Oh yeah, for dates, timestamps, etc. Oh, random, uh, random. Hello, how are you doing today? Uh, you mean like you've run into errors before, right? With dates and timestamps. With uh, within like varchar type stuff, right? Because like oftentimes things can go into string format. It's usually the other way. Like a string can't go into like a number. A string can kind of go into a, a date, but only if it's the right format of string. Uh, I want, is it fetch? Uh, so, fetch many, fetch all, fetch one, fetch optional. Okay, let's try fetch, it's one or zero. So that works, oh wait. Oh, right, right. Um, let's fetch one. Okay, so that's, oh, then we get this record type now. And so I believe I can uh, debug, can I debug a record? Let's find out. I can debug a record. Okay, so if I run this, this is behind, this is behind, okay, so I'm gonna pop you out. So it'll be easier for us to see. So we're gonna run this and we should see the output. There it is, record has an ID of four. So we didn't create that, that type, that's an anonymous struct that I can now access. I can use a query as and basically say, okay, this is what I want to get out. Um, okay, so that's that's good. And then we can obviously see that one in here. Okay, so Uh, does that answer your question? Um, let's see. Actually, I don't think that was a question because you were talking about after the dollar one. Uh, random, I'm, I wasn't sure which thing you were... T oh, no. Oh, no. What happened? Right. How was that a link? Oh my god, game.name. It thought that game.name was a link. I'm sorry about that, random. Ah, you don't need to be sorry. It's, yeah, okay. I have links turned off for uh, for most chat because, uh, you know, we've we've had bad stuff in here. But I can I can see it. So it's, um, here, I'll, I'll, I'll repost this in here. So that's, that's what it was. So game.name is an i32. Yeah, so here we can see game.name is an i32, uh, but we save it as a varchar. So if I look at this, ds games, um, name here is a varchar 255. So it is going in, it's being handed as a number into Postgres, and I'm telling, uh, I'm telling SQL X, Hey, this is an uh, a small number. It's okay. Don't worry about it. I guess it's not small. It's just a normal number. Don't worry about it. It's a number. Be be fine. Uh, Postgres is then saying, "Oh, this is a number, but it's a character." Okay, here you go. I'll character that. And so it's now it's now a string. If I were to get this out, it would now be a string number as opposed to a number number. I know it's a little bit confusing and not not that great, but it lets us work with it. So, uh, all right. So that's query query as we take a look at some of the the unchecked basically uh, 
Wouldn't it be better to convert it to string from Rust before saving the database? Yes, it would be. And we can cast it back out as an in4. Yeah, so when we're getting it back out, I could cast that one out as an in4, but I wouldn't necessarily, well, I, I guess I guess we could do that. Uh, I am running out of time, so we can do this one, we can do this one last test, and then I'll have to head off to uh, to work for the day. Uh, so we're gonna do an async function get I uh, get by ID is we'll call it. So we'll have our pool, uh, and we'll have an ID which is a i32, um, and we'll just do that. So we'll do that. Uh, result now. We, if I do query